What can we learn from someone who's done $8.5 million in sales? Well, quite a lot actually. I interviewed an inspirational individual who shared his experience with print on demand, various businesses, and his incredibly popular and successful e-com brand. I want to share five insanely valuable insights from this seven figure seller. And this person is Jordan Kilgore. You may not have heard of him, which is a shame because he has some very valuable advice. This advice might not specifically be for print on demand, but if you want to be an entrepreneur or you want to be successful with your business, including print on demand, I can guarantee you, you will learn a lot from this video. Let's start with the first point. Number one, solve a problem. Starting a business by first identifying a problem and then solving it is usually the main driving force behind many successful businesses. With Jordan, he found that people had a lot of broken controllers for gaming consoles. They were going to waste, but what if he could do something with them? Fix them up, jazz them up, and then resell them. It's a very unique but really cool business model. And with print on demand, it's hard to identify a problem as it's not really that sort of business. However, I don't want you to think that that should stop you. Number two, hard work and perseverance. Jordan wasn't alone with this one. Amongst the 15 other people I interviewed as well, they all said this. And well, I preach it as much as I possibly can. Hard work pays off. What Jordan said that I found fascinating was the harder something is, the larger the payoff will be and the less people would attempt it. This is quite interesting. Meaning if you're doing something really, really tough, you can be sure not many others are going to attempt it or try it. So when you do eventually succeed, you're not going to have to worry as much about the competition. And this is a great position to be in. Jordan got some of his ambition and his hardworking drive from his dad, which again is something that I see very frequently amongst lots of successful entrepreneurs. Number three, the importance of branding. This took up a large portion of the podcast, mainly because it's such a huge and important topic. Building a brand is one of the best ways to differentiate yourself from everyone else. And in print on demand, brand is often overlooked, which is why I wanted to talk about it. We don't usually have the option of building a brand because, well, many times we choose to sell on Etsy or Amazon or dare I say, Redbubble, where building a brand just isn't really a thing. Jordan stressed how important building a brand allowed them to scale to a seven figure business, have repeat customers and above all else, charge a premium for their product, which of course resulted in higher margins. Having higher margins allows you to spend more money on advertising and it just gives you a lot more leeway. Now they used to customize controllers and then repackage them back into the original Sony or Microsoft boxes and then ship them out to the customer. And this was good for one off sales, but it wasn't helping their brand in the long run. And now they have this beautiful packaging and it's an amazing customer experience. And Jordan says they wanted to position themselves as basically the world's most customizable controller with the best customer support and the ability to fulfill orders faster than anyone else. Those were the three major things that he saw would allow them or allow their brand to stand out. And with print on demand, we don't have much leeway in regards to packaging and branding, but we can try as much as possible. You know, custom inserts, custom neck labels, high quality, a memorable website, good customer service, a good message, you know, having a good message always helps. And down the line, maybe, maybe we can speak to suppliers and get a better custom packaging made. So the customer ends up having an amazing experience as soon as they receive their order. Creating something memorable can pay off massively in any business, including print on demand. Because of course, if you create something memorable, you're going to get a lot more repeat customers. Number four, leveraging social media. Jordan 
has generated over a billion views on social media. And no, he doesn't have a huge YouTube following or something like that. Saying that, this is a huge achievement and it's no surprise that his brand is doing so well. This day and age, it's so hard to ignore social media and it's possible for almost anyone to benefit from it. And I don't understand people who want to totally ignore it. With print on demand, a lot of people don't want to show their faces on social media and that's totally understandable. And Jordan gave some really cool video ideas that allowed you to showcase your products without showing your face, such as a POV, point of view videos, or, or something else other than showing your face. POV would be like a camera on your chest using the product or whatever. And what I found really interesting was Jordan said with their business, it used to just be organic. That's where all their traffic came from. But now a huge portion of traffic is actually paid traffic. 80% comes from paid advertising. Still, of course, on TikTok, but it's interesting to see how paid has massively overtaken organic. And I asked Jordan, what was his take on print on demand and TikTok ads? Because currently the types of print on demand ads you see are you know, slideshows of the product or just TikTok pages full of product mockups. These won't get you anywhere. And it was interesting to hear his thoughts about, you know, these point of view videos, working with influencers, UGCs, all these kind of things. At the end of the day, you've got to innovate. You've got to find trends. Being able to create viral content for your products can completely change the landscape of your business. I was getting so unbelievably pumped just listening to what he had to say and hearing his ideas on short form content, I can tell you our business is going to drastically change based on what he said in this podcast. Now I'm still a big believer in Facebook ads and always will be, but I think in order to really stand out, you've got to do something different. So ask yourself, how many people doing print on demand are really leveraging short form content? A tiny, tiny, tiny number. And that opens the door for us to do it and stand out and not really worry about competition. Types of content that is really good is user-generated content, review videos, and then subtle marketing videos. I wanna give you an example. If you had a bike t-shirt, rather than simply make a TikTok with the t-shirt mock-up or a slideshow, you could have a video where I don't know, someone does a cool backflip on their mountain bike or something like that, and they happen to be wearing your t-shirt. Much, much more viral and subtle marketing for your brand. Now, of course, I know this will open the door to many questions. Where are you finding a mountain bike guy who can do a backflip wearing your t-shirt? Th these things are difficult. You've got to reach out to lots of people. You've got to ask yourself what you're able to do, what you, people you know are able to do, and you've got to really think outside the box. The idea behind that backflip was just me explaining how you have to think outside the box with your content. Number five, continuous evolution and adaptation. This point really resonated with me. People always try to finalize something on the first try when actually things can and should be adapted over time to suit the market and to suit the customer. Jordan told me how his business evolved over time, how his brand evolved and improved based on the market and what the customer wanted. We can do this with our print on demand business as well. We can increase our prices over time. We can change our brand colors, amend our logo, spice up our website, improve our packaging and product quality. We can do all of this and these can all be done over time. You don't need to spend months and months getting everything perfect from day one. It's better to get something out there, see if it sells and then improve it once you have a proven business and once you have customers. Imagine spending two months working on a brand name for a pod business that didn't even have any designs. It makes no sense, it's completely backwards. Come up with designs, create a simple quick brand and as you get sales and you grow in popularity, make it better. This is a far, far better use of time and it's also important to note Nothing is set in stone. A perfect example is Lego. They've had 15 logo redesigns, 15, that's crazy. And the key takeaway from this point is to just 
get started. There is no time like the present. The full conversation with Jordan was fascinating. It was over an hour long and once edited, I'll be putting it in the print on demand hub community. If you found this video helpful in any way, shape or form, please don't forget to smash that subscribe button. Help me hit a hundred thousand subscribers. And of course, I hope you liked this video and found these points as valuable as I did. It's not often that you can hear from an industry expert and it's safe to say Jordan is without a doubt an industry expert. Thank you for watching. If there's anyone specific that you would like me to interview, please let me know in the comments down below and I will reach out to them and do my best. See you in the next one.